Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth in Time. Join me today to learn about the geology and history of underground mining in the 1800s, early 1900s. We're going to take a tour of the Nevada State Museum where they've recreated one of these mines we can walk through and learn about the amazing history and geology associated with how early minerals are found, things like silver and gold. Plus, we'll learn a little bit about my family's history in mining. So with that being said, let's get to it. So what did mining look like underground? Well, here's some examples from 1800 sketches and pictures showing how they would do this block style building and within these mines to create strength and levels for the miners to work different areas. Now, this is probably, a lot of this was probably pre-dynamite and this was actually done by pick and shovel to open a lot of these up. You can take a look at an early lift system here as well as here's a nice picture of miners working underground. You see these square timbers keeping the rock up from falling on their head and them taking breaks and eating. And then so you get deep enough, it actually starts getting hot underground. And as it gets hot underground, miners would need to have water cool off. And you'll notice that the miners are not wearing shirts here. So all these pictures that you just saw and you're seeing now are from 19th century hard rock mining illustrations from lantern slides of the Comstock. So this is the Comstock area which is actually up in Virginia City which was the largest silver discovery I think still within the United States and it was discovered in the 1860s. Mining is central to life in Nevada still to this day. Nevada produces as much gold as almost anywhere in the world. I think the only places producing more gold than just the state of Nevada are Australia and South Africa. So it gives you an idea how important mining is still today within this region. They wanted to build an example of what a mine looks like, an underground mine. Now, modern mines, yeah, don't so much look like this, but back in the 1800s, this is how mining was done. So let's go walk through this mine entrance. Let's learn a little bit more about mining in the Old West here in Nevada. So what were the miners looking for? Well, a lot of times they were chasing veins in these hard rock environments. And so this is an example of a gold quartz vein. And how do they know they have a gold quartz vein? Well, there's usually what we call the country rock, which is the rock around the area that has a certain look to it. And then you'll see some kind of different type of rock, in this case, a vein, usually along a fault zone. So faults, people are familiar with things like the San Andreas Fault. Faults allow fluids to flow along them. And with those fluids, a lot of times are precious metals like gold and silver. So the miners would look for these areas of veining and they would start mining those and chasing those veins for miles and miles, which were occurring along these fault zones most of the time. And this is a nice example of a miner looking at gold within a quartz vein between, see there's a different rock on the right, left. So suggesting there's a fault here. If you have two different rocks on either side, there's a fault and then there's a vein going through that fault. This is a really nice exhibit that actually takes in some really fundamentals of geology and what we do as geologists. So geologists are the folks who often find these deposits for us to mine. So if you have gold or silver, thank a geologist for finding it for you. One of the risks are mine collapses and they would have mine collapses or sections that were unstable, like this example of an abandoned drift is what they call it where you wouldn't have individuals working more and actually board it off to try to protect people from going down there. This is a nice example of one of those. And as I walk through here, it's a lot of fun just looking around. They did such an amazing job of recreating what being inside one of these mines would look like without actually having to go in one. And you really get a feel for the size of these. Here I am for scale and you can see I can almost, well, I can hit my, my hair can hit this for sure. But you can see that there's not a lot of room in these areas. So you can see the shaft going behind me. And if I turn around, you'll see the shaft going the other direction. So fun exhibit to walk around and really see the scale of one of these mining operations. Although I don't know if they actually did a lot of milling within the actual mines, because I think the dust and mercury would be dangerous. They put a stamp mill in here, which is where they would take the ore, they'd bring it out and machines like this and machines that are two stories tall or a story tall, gigantic machines, basically would crush the ore by spinning the boom, 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 boom. 
crushing the ore and then they could separate out the precious minerals from the ore. Usually this was done, as far as I know, always on the surface, but if you may know something different, please let me know. Maybe they had smaller ones to, to do some quick assaying to find out if they actually found a good vein within the mine. But my understanding is they pretty much always did them or they always did them at the surface because you don't want to kick up any more dust in here than you needed to. And you also didn't want to introduce things like mercury into this environment as well. Here's an operator for one of the hoists, like the one we saw when we first came down. You'll see they actually have to have licenses and they actually have a machine in here showing what that would look like. They have some weight on there and they would hoist people and or up and down shafts. And in this one, oh, this one actually says this one employees are not allowed. This is only for rocks and probably tools to come up and down. And here is a model of what one of these square set stopes would look like as they're mining down. They basically created a network of blocks or cubes that created strength so they could mine a lot more. They can mine at higher and lower levels and be safe. And this is a nice recreation of one of those. So this is what the Comstock load would have looked like. A lot of the mines there, and that's the area in Virginia City that really set up Nevada, made Nevada which is known as the silver state, be the silver state. So from the model to here's an actual life-size creation of one of those square set stopes. And you can see how they have miners over there swinging a pick. There's miners drilling in there, creating hole. And you can get an idea about the scale of some of these features and how they go up and down on ladders between these different levels. Within one of these square set stopes. So this is copper stope. So I didn't mention copper before, but copper was also mined here in the Western US and there's still large copper mines in the Western US, but this look, shows you what one of these copper mines would look like. So a lot of times copper comes in these blue and green varieties. So if you see azurite or malachite, those are actually copper ores. Um, another one's a light blue called chrysocolla and they would chase those and they create these stopes and follow those deposits. And then they can mine, they shoot the rocks down these and then they go down to some kind of collection area down below. I mentioned earlier, if there was an area that was dangerous, they would block it off. And here's a nice example of that, that they would actually board off dangerous sections of the mine that they knew about. And this is an example of that. 1800s, they probably still had to have areas where they would have dynamite storage. And that's what you're seeing here is in order to keep going deeper and deeper into the mines, once dynamite was invented, they were able to clear a lot of rubble very quickly, but because they're explosives, there's a lot of safety that had to be involved again. And so to have basically safe rooms or areas where they would put the dynamite together and put the fuses on and prep everything for clearing out a new section of rock and creating new tunnel. We talked about the cap room earlier and the idea of dynamite. And here's an example of that as they drill a hole they put the dynamite into the rock and you'll see these little wires coming down. Let's tie those wires together and then dynamite will go poof and break up all that rock. Then they come in and start shoveling it into ore carts and then moving it out to eventually get to a stamp mill. And here are folks drilling, looking for actually this example of shelite ore or tungsten. Now I will say my family used to have a tungsten mine. My grandparents did down in Southern California. So it kind of runs in my blood, I guess, mining and and geology. This actually has a button to push. Let's see what it has to say. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, so the button turns into a black light. So one thing, and I learned this from my family, is tungsten ore actually glows underneath a black light. In the 1940s and 50s, when they were looking for tungsten ore, you can see it glowing blue there. They'd use black lights to find the veins. And you can actually see this line of veins coming from down on the lower left-hand part of my screen, coming up across and over. 
And so this miner is drilling right into that vein that he found with the black light. That's a pretty cool display. We can use a lot of different types of technology to try to understand the types of rocks. In fact, I did a short video on fluorescent rocks, which I'll link up here that you all can check out as well. All right, continuing on through this, I keep having to duck my head. I'm worried I'm gonna whack, <laughs> whack myself right in the forehead here soon. Uh, another dead end that way, if I turn around, here's the powder storage room. And this is where they put all the, the gunpowder and the dynamite without the caps and fuses being something like this away from everybody and then eventually they started having electricity down in the mines and they have things like air compressors and they started having to have water pumps because they would get so deep in the earth not only was it hot but they were starting to run into the water table or water deep underneath the earth or deep into the earth and they'd have to pump out that water so they can continue mining so they found all kinds of ingenious ways to do that and here's an old pump well that was a really neat walk through an exhibit of what a mine looks like most of us don't get a chance to do that or understand that or even understand that most of the raw materials we have come from mines so gold silver rare earth minerals that we have all come from geologists going and finding those features and the miners and engineers going out and getting them out of the earth so this was a really neat example of what that looks like, especially going back to the 1860s when you were setting up a lot of the mines and ghost towns here in Nevada and a lot in the Western US, places like Colorado, New Mexico, Idaho, you name a Western state, they had mines in place that helped build those states. So with that being said, thank you all for joining me today to take this mine tour. And if you enjoyed this video, you all know what to do. I appreciate all of you joining me. And of course, Take care and stay safe out there.